Did you know Super Smash Bros. didn't start out as a fighting game? According to series director Masahiro Sakurai, Smash was originally based on the traditional Japanese children's game Ohajiki, where points are scored by flicking marbles between other marbles. But over the course of the game's development, the original concept faded away as more and more fighting elements were introduced, like when Sakurai added the ability to knock opponents off screen, an idea he envisioned for Kirby's Dream Land but never implemented. The first working prototype of Smash Bros. was called Ryuo Fighting Game, named after the city of Ryuo where the developers were based. Some fans claim Smash Bros. original title was Dragon King the Fighting Game, but that's actually not quite correct. Dragon King is just a direct translation of the city's name, Ryuo. Calling it Dragon King the Fighting Game is like claiming a game called Los Angeles the Fighting Game is actually titled The Angels the Fighting Game, as Los Angeles means the angels in Spanish. Interestingly, Sakurai used his own personal camera to snap photos of the city for stage backgrounds in the prototype. These were mostly skylines, but he he also snapped a close-up of a woman's crossed legs, which, just like the cityscapes, was used in the prototype. After two years in development, Smash 64 launched to critical acclaim and sold more than a million copies in Japan, so Nintendo laid out plans to export it overseas, eventually localizing the game into English, French, German, and Chinese. But during the localization process, some of the voice acting was cut from the original Japanese version, like Fox saying mission complete after obtaining a victory. One of the biggest differences were the Pokémon whose cries got switched out with audio from local anime dubs. The Chinese localization was the strangest, with a mix of Japanese and English used for half the summonable Pokémon, while the other half got brand new cries, like Coughing, who yells Waza, Waza, and Venusaur yelling Zhongzu, which means seed. Zhongzu! Most of the other Pokémon just made unintelligible sounds, because the Chinese anime didn't get proper cries until several years later. Boop. Come on! This is the same reason Jigglypuff never says her Chinese name. Instead, she switches back and forth between English and Japanese, making Chinese Jigglypuff the only bilingual Pokémon in the whole series. <laughs> Except for the Chinese version, every region's localization of Smash 64 was comprised of totally unique character specifications. There is a secret technique known as momentum sliding that only exists in the original Japanese version. The maneuver is technically a glitch, which allows some fighters to slide backwards long distances, giving them a tactical advantage just like Melee and Ultimate's Wave Dash. When Smash Bros. was updated from the Japanese to the American version, over 100 alterations were made to the character's stats for balancing purposes. For example, in America, Mario and Luigi are bigger, Kirby's smaller, and Link's sword is shorter. Captain Falcon runs faster, Samus's up smash is stronger, and Fox's blaster deals more damage. About 20 more technical tweaks were made in Australia, like Pikachu's thunder becoming more powerful, and Jigglypuff's rest getting nerfed with a much smaller hitbox. Fewer tweaks were deemed necessary by the time Europe's localization was finally complete, so it was nearly identical to the Australian version except for a few changes made to Link, like making him heavier and upgrading his forward smash with more damage potential. Melee received some technical tweaks internationally as well, but only a few dozen, and later Smash games didn't contain any tweaking around the world as they would have made online play virtually impossible. After the success of Smash 64, Sakurai asked Japanese fans who they'd most like to see added to the roster in a hypothetical Smash Bros. 2. When he tallied up the results, Bowser, Ganondorf, Falco, and Mewtwo were the most requested characters from their respective franchises, so they all found their way into Super Smash Bros. Melee. Interestingly, Slippy and Chocobos beat out Wolf and Sonic in their categories. Despite their victories, they were never added to the roster even to this day, even after Wolf and Sonic made their way into Brawl. Out of all 64 characters, Characters in Sakurai's poll, only six have yet to appear in the Smash series, either as fighters or smaller roles like spirits or assist trophies. Those six characters are Doraemon, Crash Bandicoot, Fire Emblem's Ogma, James Bond and Alec Trevelyan from 007, and the Blast Corps. In case you don't remember the Blast Corps, they were the heroes of an N64 game by the same name, who were forced to destroy everything in the path of a runaway nuclear missile carrier, or else it would explode. Blast Corps was developed by Rare, and was fairly popular back in the 90s, but never got 
got a sequel, leaving it to slowly fade from gamers' collective memory over the decades. However, internal data suggests the Blast Corps were actually planned to make their Smash series debut in Ultimate as spirits, but for unknown reasons, they ended up getting cut before the game was finished. This may have been due to their IP belonging to Rare, and by extension Microsoft rather than Nintendo. Doraemon was probably rejected for not being a video game character, but if history's any guide, Crash and Smash will probably happen sooner or later, especially now that almost a dozen Crash games have spun their way onto various Nintendo consoles. Ogma is probably one of the more surprising exclusions, since he hails from Fire Emblem, a series many fans say is overrepresented in Smash. Despite placing on Sakurai's Smash 2 poll, Ogma's never made an appearance in any Smash game. As for James Bond and Alec Trevelyan, Sakurai has indicated 007 characters will probably never join the roster due to licensing concerns. However, GoldenEye's Proximity Mine did make it into Smash 64, although its name was changed to the Motion Sensor Bomb in most localizations outside Japan. And another item from GoldenEye almost made it into Melee. Unused images and sound effects for timed mines can be found in Melee's internal data, and presumably would have functioned just like they did in GoldenEye, latching onto a surface then exploding a few seconds later. But that's not the only secret hidden in Melee's internal data. There's also unused menu text indicating several scrapped game modes, which were uncovered by Digino Gaming's own Push Dustin. One mode would have granted access to the Smash Brothers Dojo, providing players with tips and tricks on how to improve their skills and learn new techniques. Another mode was Trophy Battles, with text telling players they can exchange trophies with a friend. Unfortunately, the game's unused text doesn't explain how exactly Trophy Battles would have worked, but hopefully someday a new discovery, leak, or developer interview will paint the full picture. While Melee was in development, Sakurai planned for every Nintendo franchise represented in the roster to receive two stages each, what he described as one front stage and one backstage. The front stages were more straightforward and geared towards competitive play, while the backstages were more fun and gimmicky. For example, Peach's Castle was the Mario series' front stage, while Rainbow Cruise was the series' backstage. All the stages in the upper row are the front stages, while the stages beneath them are the backstages. But Sakurai's original vision didn't turn out quite like he'd planned. Melee only ended up with one Ice Climber stage as the second got scrapped late in development. Sakurai never provided a description of the lost level, and neither is game data or leaks for that matter, but presumably it was the front stage that got cut, since Icicle Mountain is somewhat gimmicky. Melee also didn't feature any Fire Emblem stages, because the only stage that had any work put into it ended up getting cut too. The Smash series stage count has exploded from just 29 in Melee to over 100 stages in Ultimate, but there's still one character who's never gotten a stage of his own, Rob the robot. Every Smash game has featured content from other IPs long before said IP's content appeared in their own games. Just to name a few examples, the Falcon Punch was invented for Smash 64, but wasn't part of F-Zero canon until the F-Zero anime. In the final episode, Captain Falcon unleashes a massive Falcon Punch on series villain Black Shadow. Roy appeared in Smash Bros. Melee before he was ever seen in a Fire Emblem game. Armored mechs known as Geckos made their worldwide debut on Shadow Moses Island in Smash Bros. Brawl, almost half a year before they made their first appearance in a Metal Gear game. Smash for 3DS featured English music from Fire Emblem Fates before its release in 2015, and Smash for Wii U featured the Woolly World stage a full seven months before the release of Yoshi's Woolly World. And in Smash Ultimate, fans got to use the Poltergust G-100, the Slam, and Suction Shot from Luigi's Mansion 3, even though Luigi's Mansion 3 didn't release until the following year. In fact, all this content was first seen in Simon's reveal trailer, over a month before Nintendo announced Luigi's Mansion 3 was even in development. Goku's been at the top of fans' wish lists ever since non-Nintendo characters like Sonic and Snake were added to the roster in Brawl. But in 2019, Sakurai shut down the possibility once and for all, telling fans he's heard them begging for Goku, but Smash only has room for video game characters. Even if they've appeared in their own games, anime characters like Goku and Doraemon are never gonna make the cut as long as he's in charge. So Dragon Ball fans might have to wait for Sakurai's retirement to see Goku who rained down Kamehameha's on Kirby and Pikachu. But for now, they can at least take some comfort in hearing his voice. Goku's voice actor Sean Schemmel's been playing Lucario in Smash ever since Smash 4. But this isn't the only crossover. In total, there's more than 50 actors whose voices connect Smash Brothers to Dragon Ball. The full list is too long to cover, but in addition to Goku, some highlights include Gohan, who voices Ryu in Ultimate. Piccolo also plays Roy. Vegeta plays Captain Falcon, and Cell plays both Knuckles and Guile. 
Some of Smash Ultimate's alternate costumes represent Pokémon forms that are now completely unobtainable in the latest generations. One of Pichu's alts is Spiky-Eared Pichu, a time-traveling event Pokémon who can only be caught in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, and can't be traded or transferred, meaning Spiky-Eared Pichu is stuck forever in Generation 4, except for in Smash Ultimate. But Electric Mice aren't the only lost Pokémon who've taken refuge in the Smash series. About 20 Pokémon had unique shiny colors that were retired after Gen 2, like Char Charizard, who was originally purple and green, but was changed to black and red in all future generations. Charizard's modern shiny can't be found in Smash Ultimate, but its retired shiny was included as an alternate costume. The same can be said for Mewtwo. You can't play as its modern shiny, but you can play with its original shiny colors from Gen 2. In fact, Smash Ultimate is the only game released in the past 20 years where these retired shiny Pokémon still exist. Did you know? As you can probably tell by the length of this video, the Super Smash Bros. series has an extensive history of rumors. Let's start off all the way at the beginning with Super Smash Bros. for the Nintendo 64. It was rumored that Smash 64 started as a Super Nintendo game. This rumor appears to originate from some Smash wikis, where it was propagated as the truth. However, Smash 64 was always a Nintendo 64 game. This fact was proven by the series' director Masahiro Sakurai in an Awada Asked interview when he commented on the game's prototype. Sakurai has also published the first page of the Smash 64 64 project proposal in his book Think About the Video Games, which backs up this point. Sakurai originally envisioned Smash as a concept with no particular characters in mind. Eventually, he decided to use Nintendo characters, believing that a console fighting game needed a recognizable cast of characters to sell. Although Smash 64 came out in a time where the internet was available, there was still a lot of confusion and misinformation surrounding the game. On November 16, 1998, IGN reported that Smash 64's roster would include Wario and Peach, and stated that characters like Diddy Kong and Bowser were expected to appear. On November 19th of that same year, Nintendo Dojo claimed that eight characters, including Princess Peach, would be in Smash 64. They got the other seven characters right, but Peach's inclusion was clearly false. This was before the game had an official title, simply going by Smash Brothers. In general, there was a lot of excitement and confusion around who exactly would appear in this new fighting game. Even Shigeru Miyamoto, the father of Mario, was confused on exactly who'd be joining Smash. In an interview with Nintendo Power, Miyamoto stated that Bowser would be appearing in the game, but Bowser wouldn't enter the series until Melee. Interestingly, before Melee was even announced, Sakurai revealed on the Japanese Smash 64 Dojo that Bowser, Mewtwo, and Dedede were all planned to appear in Smash 64, and Mewtwo had actually been worked on in-game. Every other character reported on by news outlets either stemmed from miscommunication or misinformation. Before Smash 64 was out in Europe, Sakurai and a couple of HAL employees had already began planning and prototyping a new Smash Brothers. The title of the game was decided while Sakurai was at E3 in 1999. Super Smash Brothers Melee Melee had an intense development cycle, with a grueling 13-month production period which afforded Sakurai very little time off work. Because of the relatively short and secretive development cycle, there weren't many leaks and rumors for Melee. In fact, most misinformation appeared after the game's release. Much like Mew under the truck in the original Pokémon games, these Smash rumors were often touted as truth by various websites and forum users. The first example of this involves Toad. Many believed Toad could be unlocked either by shooting all the credits or in the adventure mode. This was baseless and simply untrue. The magazine Electronic Gaming Monthly also contributed to the rumors. For their April Fool's Day issue, EGM stated that Sonic and Tails were unlockable after 20 kills in Cruel Melee. They even created a mock unlock screen that stated, A dream has been cast. Sonic and Tails joined the melee, fooling many. One rumor that had some half-truths to it was Master Hand being playable. It is possible, either through exploiting a glitch or using devices like Action Replay, to play as Master Hand. However, he isn't accessible on the character selection screen like a regular character through normal means. Before moving on to Brawl, it's worth highlighting a major source of misinformation that existed for quite some time. A NeoGAF user named CCDNYM posted several assertions about Smash 64 and Melee's unused characters, most of which was false. DDD wasn't the next character in line for a spot in Melee. It was Wario. Wolf also wasn't considered for a clone spot in Melee. And Leaf wasn't considered for a role as a Marth clone. Meowth and Pit were never worked on for Smash 64 either. To combat this, Source Gaming has made the definitive unused fighter 
Fighter list in Smash. The list has all characters that were ever considered, planned, or scrapped for every Smash game with sources to back up the claims. Unfortunately for Sakurai, Melee's roster was leaked slightly before the game's release. Steve Chardain, who at the time went by his online handle Other Steve, announced that Ganondorf had made it into Melee as a Captain Falcon clone a month before the game came out. Ensider leaked the full roster, but many fans were outraged at the lineup. Most fans had no idea who Roy and Mr. Game & Watch were, and resented Dr. Mario's inclusion. Ensider eventually retracted the article, explaining that they weren't 100% confident in the story. After Melee's release, however, the roster was confirmed, leaving many fans shocked. Super Smash Bros. Brawl's development faced a number of new obstacles for the series, which led to many delays. With the delays and the internet being more social, even more leaks, rumors, and misinformation emerged around Brawl than with other Smash games. Smash became much more difficult to predict, and more wild rumors suddenly seemed plausible. Despite the worldwide nature of the Smash Dojo, which was now in several languages, some parts of it were only available in Japanese. This included the Brawl ballot responses, which led to some confusion. In the ballot, Sakurai said there might be one or two third-party characters after Snake. However, many fans assumed there would literally be two, which did not happen. Another statement that fans took literally is a quote that Sakurai didn't even say, which emerged on the Smashboards forum as an alleged translation. Sakurai supposedly replied to a comment about Muddy Mole from Nintendo's Game Boy puzzle game, Mole Mania, saying he's so interesting, he might be in the roster already. The rumor might have died here, but it was published by IGN in the run-up to Brawl's release. Another rumor, first reported by a number of French outlets, stated that Sakurai was interviewed by an unknown Japanese radio program. In it, he supposedly stated that Ridley and Bowser Jr. were planned to appear, and that the Ice Climbers and Mr. Game & Watch were cut. No other sources corroborated the existence of this radio program, and the information proved to be false. Several other Brawl-centered rumors proved to be false. These included a rival Pokémon trainer character, an alternate costume similar to Wario's overalls for every character, a playable Mega Man, and even a fake roster mock-up. Despite the numerous fake leaks regarding Brawl, some have been legitimate. The Brawl website leaked the inclusion of Lucario, Jigglypuff, and Ness with one of their pictures of the day. Jigglypuff's inclusion was later reinforced during an interview with Snake voice actor David Hayter, who joked that it would be fun to wail on Pikachu or Jigglypuff. Smashboard's users Markman, Reno, and Portrait of Ruin all posted genuine information about the game's characters and stages. Smashboard's user Nyase Nya also correctly stated that Sonic, Olimar, and Toon Link would be playable, which veteran fighters would return, and that there'd be a total of 35 playable characters. They also reported a second delay to the game's release, and that Brawl would be on a dual-layer disc, a first for a Wii game. Many other users believed Nyase Nya to be a troll, and their posts were even edited by a moderator to state they were lying. Game FAQ's user Chaos Zero also correctly reported that Wolf, Lucario, and Sonic were in the game, and that Mewtwo had been cut. They even described the mechanics of the Dragoon item originally from Kirby Air Ride, and the inclusion of a stage builder function. Like Nyase Nya, many assumed that Chaos Zero was just a troll. Brawl also represented a turning point for investigating video game files. By 2008, the home brewing scene had made the Wii popular amongst hackers. Several of these hackers focused on Brawl, as many fans were curious about the game's leftover content. Data miners discovered evidence for seven characters potentially cut from Brawl, including Dixie Kong, Dr. Mario, Mewtwo, Roy, Toon Zelda, Toon Sheik, and a character labeled Pra Mai. Many believe Pra Mai could be referring to Pokemon Plusle and Minun. Just like with every other Smash game, there were several fake and legitimate leaks for Smash on 3DS and Wii U. Before E3 2014, a Smashboards user named Ninka Kiwi claimed that several characters had new palette swaps, even posting recreations of them online. Ninka Kiwi also claimed that Lucas, Wolf, Ice Climbers, and Snake had been cut, while Dr. Mario, Dark Pit, Bowser Jr. and the Koopalings, Shulk, and Duck Hunt would be added. One of the more significant leaks was posted by Sal Romano from Gematsu. Romano first posted information on the forum NeoGAF, predicting the inclusion of Little Mac, Pac-Man, Mega Man, Miis, and characters from Animal Crossing and Wii Fit, characters very few saw coming. Previously, Sakurai had even said that Animal Crossing characters were unsuited for battle. The announcement of Villager and Wii Fit Trainer gave credence to the idea that Romano had insider information. Romano later followed up his post with an article predicting the inclusion of Shulk, Palutena, Krom, a Pokémon from X and Y, and the Chorus Men from Rhythm Heaven as playable characters. Almost all of these characters were eventually confirmed to be in the game, with Sakurai commenting in an interview that Greninja was written simply Pokémon from Pokémon X and Y in the game's project planning documents. Interestingly, Sakurai Sakurai later confirmed that Krom was also in the Project Plan at one point, and they'd even developed a moveset for him. The Chorus Men appear to have been planned at some point, too. Source Gaming's Push Dustin found several unused 
arranged entries for characters in Smash 4's emblem database, all of which are arranged in the order of their franchise debut in Smash. Additionally, properties that have stages but no fighters are listed after franchises with playable characters. An entry for Rhythm appears before Rockman in the entries that debuted in Smash 4, implying that a character from Rhythm Heaven was once planned to be playable, presumably the Chorus Men. Interestingly, other icons imply there were once planned stages to Brain Age and Swap Note. Perhaps the most significant leak in the history of the Smash Bros. franchise was the ESRB leak of Smash 4. This occurred when a Nintendo employee sent images and short videos of the finished game's complete roster to their friends before release. Other content shown were images and videos of potentially violent or risque content that would be of interest to the ESRB. Interestingly, the leak showcased a trophy for the Fire Emblem character Tharya that is nowhere to be found in the final release, indicating that it may have been cut due to ratings issues. The ESRB leak was first posted by a 4chan user who went by the lewd name shown on screen, and quickly spread across the internet. Many debated the legitimacy of the leaks, with some fans pointing out some inconsistencies in the character select screen and arguing that Shulk's model looked like an altered Little Mac. This uncertainty led to rumor and speculation, but Nintendo had the leaked gameplay taken down from YouTube, which implied the videos were legitimate. One week after doing this, Nintendo uploaded an official reveal trailer for Shulk, confirming the ESRB leak to be real. Real. Interestingly, the same 4chan leaker posted about DLC, almost none of which turned out to be accurate. Shortly before Smash 4 was released, Nintendo uploaded a video of a few seconds of Ganondorf in a small hoop off-screen. This was before Ganondorf was officially announced for the game, and Nintendo uploaded a new version of the video without Ganondorf after they realized their mistake. Additionally, the Amazon page for Smash 4 detailed several unannounced features, including stage creation on the Wii U gamepad, challenges, and the board game-themed Smash Tour mode. All of these features were later confirmed during Nintendo's 50-fact extravaganza for the game. Although many of Smash 4's rumors and leaks were proven to be true, many were inaccurate. While Nintendo was still collecting responses to the Smash ballot for DLC characters, video game historian Liam Robertson reported that Shovel Knight would be coming to Smash Bros. as one of the ballot winners. However, this never happened. Years later, industry insider Ryan Brown explained that he'd passed the information on to Robertson after Brown found out about the Shovel Knight amiibo. At the time, only Smash Bros. fighters had amiibo, so Brown incorrectly assumed that Shovel Knight was going to be a playable fighter. This is one example of how how miscommunication between insiders led to false rumors. In January of 2014, images of Mario and Palutena surfaced online, which appeared to be authentic because the character models were new. After Palutena was officially revealed for the game with a different model, debate over whether or not these images were real intensified. They were later proven to be a hoax. The creator stepped forward in a 4chan thread about the ESRB leak, showing that the models were created in an external program and digitally manipulated to look like Smash 4 screenshots. On Valentine's Day of 2015, a leak for Rayman's DLC appeared appeared on 4chan, and several outlets reported it as potentially legitimate. However, YouTuber Artsy Omni revealed the leak to be a mock-up he'd created. He used this Rayman hoax to launch the art series Smashified, which shows what characters might look like in the Smash Bros. art style. Artsy Omni had previously created mock-ups of Kirby with various new character hats during Brawl's development that some tried to pass off as leaks. He also made a fake render for Klonoa that was exposed as a fake, as it used Japanese characters for Ike instead of Klonoa. Interestingly, before Artsy Omni's Rayman mock-up was proven to be a hoax, Ubisoft acknowledged it and said they planned to comment on it. Another fake passed off as a legitimate leak was Nibrox and Game Onion's mock-up of a Dr. Mario stage, inspired by unused data for a stage in Smash for Wii U. The pair created several renders of what the stage might have looked like, but eventually came forward and revealed it to be fake. After the release of Smash 4, YouTube user Connor Rents made a mock-up for an arcade Smash Bros. game, featuring a fake debug menu and character selection screen. Rents was also responsible for renders of Pichu and the Ice Climbers used in some fake leaks. Super Smash Bros. Memories was an early rumor that suggested that Smash 3DS would feature retro characters, while the Wii U version would be full of characters from newer franchises. This was proven to be false after Sakurai confirmed the two versions would have identical rosters. A NeoGAF user with the alias Spain Killer also claimed that a gaming insight had seen models for Dixie Kong, Ridley, the Chorus Men, and Mewtwo, and that the characters could be unlocked by linking Smash 3DS and Wii U together. After the release of both games, this too was proven false. A popular text rumor that originated on 4chan detailed a mode called the Tower of Smash, which also claimed several characters could be unlocked by linking the 3DS and Wii U games together. This mode would pit players against other characters and bosses in a series of one-on-one -on -one matches with unique rules. This rumor was proven false after the 50-fact extravaganza. Several hackers 
leaked information about the game's DLC after Smash 4's release. After looking through the update files for the 3DS game, data miner Shiny Quagsire found several unused audio files. These included fanfares for Roy from Fire Emblem and Ryu from Street Fighter. A few days later, Shiny Quagsire discovered evidence that at least five DLC characters were planned, and that there could be as many as seven new stages with both original and Omega forms. Later, VG Resource admin Random Talking Bush also data mined the update and discovered various unannounced and unreleased assets, including footage for Roy, Ryu, and Lucas. GBA temp user Crediar was actually able to get the DLC working before release and began to stream it, which was promptly shut down by Nintendo. After the release of Smash 4 and the expedited lifespan of the Wii U, many fans began speculating about the next game in the franchise. Even before the Wii U and 3DS games were finished, a job posting appeared for Smash 6 in April of 2014. Sakurai has previously stated that he considers the Wii U and 3DS versions of Smash to be separate games, so he would consider the next Smash game to be the sixth entry in the series. Dr. Sir Cantoto was the first to report the existence of a new Smash game in development, stating that it was targeted to launch alongside the Nintendo Switch, then known as the NX. Later, both Liam Robertson and Push Dustin would report on this Smash game being a deluxe port of the Wii U and 3DS games, with new content and the return of the Ice Climbers. Additionally, since the Miiverse is not featured on the Switch, the Miiverse stage would likely be cut. In November of 2016, Twitter user Laura Kate Dale reported that the amiibo for Corrin, Bayonetta, and Cloud were on hold for a Switch Smash port in 2017, but those amiibo were eventually released with no Smash announcement. A year later, in November of 2017, Nintendo registered a new trademark for Smash with a new logo that was used in the March 2018 announcement of the new Switch game. Two weeks earlier, games journalist Emily Rogers posted that she was unsure whether or not this new game would be a port, but it would reuse a great deal of content from the Wii U and 3DS games. Even before the existence of the new Smash game was confirmed, there were a number of fake leaks and rumors. Josh Thomas of the YouTube channel Nintendo Beyond created some fake screenshots for a Switch Smash Brothers that duped many outlets. Another fake video featuring Springman and Decidueye was posted on 4chan, but was eventually revealed to be the creation of YouTube user Virtual Turtle. Speaking of duping people, Marcus Sellers was tricked by Twitch streamer Connor Eats Pants into revealing fake Smash rumors that Connor had made up. Humorously, in his messages to Sellers, Connor hid the words fake and jabated. After Connor revealed himself, Marcus deleted his Smash information tweets. On May 9th, a developer on Twitter revealed that he worked on the new rendering engine that will be used for Smash Switch before he left Bandai Namco. His credentials were verified through his LinkedIn account and various forum posts. Once the tweet began to spread, he deleted his Twitter account. Did you know? Despite series creator Masahiro Sakurai's best attempt at keeping Smash Ultimate's all-star roster a secret, there were several missteps along the way, some even from Nintendo themselves. The DLC for Smash Ultimate is still being developed, but we wanted to provide a rundown of all the rumors, hoaxes, and leaks that have happened so far. We already covered Smash rumors and leaks for every Smash game before Ultimate, and even a few for Ultimate, in a previous video. So pause this video and go watch that one to be brought up to speed. Before Smash Ultimate's grand reveal, there were a few leaks about the game that went virtually unnoticed. Sakurai would even celebrate that the announcement saw few leaks. In his bi-weekly Famitsu column after the E3 announcement, he wrote, To be honest, I'm truly glad there wasn't a leak. If word had gotten out that everyone is here, then we wouldn't have had this incredible reaction. Unfortunately, Sakurai is mistaken. There were a number of leaks about the game's presentation that did ruin some of the surprises for a few eagle-eyed fans. The YouTuber Master of Hyrule indicated in a post dating from April 2018 that some characters like Duck Hunt and Shulk would return. He also posted a small image of the battlefield stage seen from above, showing that the stage would receive an update in the new Smash. Soon after, another YouTuber, GU King of Heart, would post a bigger image of the new Battlefield design and claim that he got the information from the same source that told him about Nintendo's set design of E3 2017. He also confirmed several props that'd be used by Nintendo in their E3 2018's booth, including Bayonetta's boots, Link's Master Sword, and Captain Falcon's helmet. Both posts were deleted soon after, but were talked about heavily within the hardcore Smash community. Some rumors were also published on 4chan, including a post that indicated Princess Daisy and Ridley would be revealed in the E3 presentation. The anonymous poster would continue to provide accurate information, revealing the game's title and release date. They even correctly pointed out that Bomberman would be an assist trophy, which came as a shock to many fans. Perhaps the best-known leak at the time was from a user on GameFAQs named Laws18. He revealed that all the characters of the previous games would come back, the inkling special moves, and the changes to the Zelda characters. Laws18 was met with a lot of skepticism, but his info turned out to be the real deal. However, 
later rumors from Laws 18 would prove to be mostly inaccurate about the game's development. Vergaben was also gaining notoriety at this time. He was famous for leaking details about other fighting games, and for publishing rumors of a potential Star Fox racing game. Back in March 2018, he made a post claiming that he'd heard that Tails, Phoenix Wright, Zero, and Noctis would be joining Smash as fighters, info that would later be proven false. Later that same week, he posted an update saying he heard Ridley would be joining the roster, and that Bandai Namco would develop the title from one of his more credible sources. In May, he retracted his initial claims, but doubled down on Ridley and Bandai Namco's involvement. He also added that Simon Belmont from Castlevania would also be added to the game's roster, and that there'd be no cuts from the previous entry. All information that would later be confirmed. However, like other rumors from Forgaben, he wasn't the first to post this. Stealth40k was actually the first to post that he'd heard Simon Belmont might be joining Smash back in April 2018, a full month before Forgaben made the claim. Stealth40k also asserts that Incineroar was one of the first characters leaked for Smash Ultimate. All the claims of Simon Belmont joining Smash would eventually be confirmed, inadvertently by Nintendo themselves. A day before the August 2018 Smash presentation, an employee at Nintendo accidentally renamed their YouTube Galaga medley to Blood Tears slash Monster Dance, confirming the addition of Castlevania to Smash. In the August 8th Direct, Simon Belmont, Krom, Dark Samus, King K. Rule, and Richter Belmont were announced. Richter in particular shocked many Nintendo fans, as many were unaware who the character even was. However, Chrome and Dark Samus were somewhat unexpected, as Ike and Samus seemed to lose palette swaps referencing these characters in the early demos of Ultimate. Laws 18's reputation would reach an all-time high during this point. On June 13, 2018, Laws claimed that there'd be an August Direct showcasing the start screen and options. He also claimed that a tournament mode and two other models would be shown, with one of them being the primary way to unlock characters. The new mode wasn't shown, but it wasn't enough to destroy Laws' credibility. A supposed DM leak between Forgaben and Laws 18 also gave Laws more credibility. In the conversation, Forgaben asked Laws 18 if he'd heard that there wasn't going to be a Donkey Kong newcomer. Laws said he doubted the claim, implying he believed a DK newcomer was likely. Since King K. Rule was revealed at the end of the August Direct, Laws 18's reputation was boosted among Smash fans. Laws' reputation would take a huge hit after the September Nintendo Direct, however, which revealed Isabelle as a newcomer. He'd previously stated that Skull Kid from Majora's Mask would be a newcomer before the reveal. He also stated he thought Young Link's final smash would be a fierce deity Link transformation. Both pieces of info would later be proven false. He ended up closing his account on GameFAQs shortly after due to fear of Nintendo ninjas. Despite these fears, Laws went on to open a Twitter account under the same name and claimed that Dixie Kong and Isaac would be playable. He later retired from leaking after the Direct. He'd later make a post defending his record on Smashboards and apologizing for his mistakes. While Laws 18 wouldn't be happy to see Isabelle revealed, Forgaben was. In July 2018, he posted on GameFAQs that Isabelle would be coming to the game. Later on Reddit, he claimed that he heard she was an Echo Fighter, which proved to be incorrect. Before the August 2018 Direct, he also posted that a new Pokémon would come from Generation 7, and it wouldn't be Decidueye, Lycanroc, nor Mimikyu. After the August 2018 Direct, Forgaben posted that Ken from Street Fighter would join the roster, and a character owned by Square Enix would also be included in the game's roster. Few were convinced, however, as many felt he was copying information from a NeoGAF user named Whistleblank. Whistleblank posted a message in July 2018 stating that K. Rule, Simon Belmont, and Isaac would be newcomers. They also claimed that Krom and Soren would be Echo Fighters of Ike and Robin respectively, and that Ken and an unknown character from Square Enix would join the battle. While some of their info turned out to be true, the Pokémon series eventually got a newcomer, and Isaac and Soren were missing from the game's final roster. Whistleblank then deleted their account, but some similarly named accounts appeared making various amendments to the claims, and it's unknown if they were the same person. There was another major rumor posted before the August 2018 Direct that got a lot of attention. An anonymous poster on 4chan claimed to have a demo of Smash and data mined it. The post originated from July 1st and stated that Richter would be joining the Smash roster, in addition to K. Rule and Dark Samus. The post also claimed that Gardevoir, Gothitelle, and a second Mario character, like Paper Mario, would be joining the roster. Since Richter was seen as an unlikely character by many Smash fans, the rumor gained significant traction among the fanbase. In the end, this rumor would be false, as Gardevoir, Gothitelle, and another Mario didn't join the roster. 
On August 29th, another user claimed to have the demo of Smash and was filming new footage from it. However, upon closer inspection, it was revealed that they were using footage filmed from their playtime at CEO and using dummy accounts to request certain footage that they'd then publish to boost their credibility. Another post on 4chan from July 25th claimed that Gino, Celica, Simon Belmont, and Isabel would be added to the game. Celica and Gino would be missing from the game's final roster, proving this rumor false. Another post from September 2018 claimed Isabel, Ken, and Incineroar would be in the game and asserted that Skull Kid and Gino wouldn't be fighters. This post would end up being technically true, but it's unknown if they were piggybacking off other leaks. There were a few image leaks suggesting Gino would be a newcomer. The smug Gino leak became a bit of a meme in the Smash community. Upon closer inspection, the image was found to be just an edited image of Gino from Project M. Gino wasn't the only character that got a hoax during this time. Reddit user CamTunist made a fake PokeFloats 2 leak, also in September, featuring Skull Kid and Bandana D. The post fooled a few in the Smash community, but people like Push Dustin pointed out there were several lighting and size discrepancies, suggesting the photos had been altered. In fall 2018, many fans believed Karate Joe from Rhythm Heaven was coming to Smash as a fighter. This is because during King K. Rules reveal trailer, Donkey Kong struck a pose resembling an image of Karate Joe. This was even covered by outlets such as Game Explain, bringing more awareness to the potential nod. This led to a number of Rhythm Heaven hoaxes, such as one that showed Karate Joe without a shadow. There was even a 4chan post that sought to recreate the setup for Memory Post, suggesting Rhythm Heaven would get a new character. However, as Push Dustin pointed out on Twitter, several aspects of the images showed it was fake, like different lighting, the emblem's poor design, and the dubious nature in which it was uploaded. In the end, all of these images were false. Rhythm Heaven was also featured in another 4chan fake that gained a lot of attention from the Smash community. In a post that closely resembled a Smash for 3DS leak, renders of Agnes from Bravely Default, Shadow the Hedgehog, the Chorus Kids, Skull Kid, Isabel, Isaac, and Ken could supposedly be seen. However, there were a number of issues with the images, including Agnes's name being spelt wrong, and her hair being parted differently from her official artwork. The art was actually made by Twitter user Lepi Peppy. Fans didn't just look at the poses of characters to get hints about who was joining Smash, they even judged the decor to determine who was coming next. Some fans convinced themselves that Sakurai hinted at K. Rool being in the game before his reveal, and began looking at the August Direct for other hints. Some fans thought the color of the chairs seen in the August Direct indicated that Waluigi or Skull Kid would come to Smash. In the end, this was just another example of fans reading too much into things and grasping at straws. In September 2018, the Japanese magazine Koro Koro mistakenly reported that Smash Ultimate would have 108 stages when the game launched. In the previous August Direct, Sakurai showed off the stage select screen with 103 stages. This led to some believing that five additional series would be revealed with additional stages. September 2018 was a long month for Smash fans. Despite Isabel being confirmed for the roster, Smash speculation was at an all-time high with intense discussion on who else will be joining the roster. On September 14, 2018, Amazon posted images of the Smash Ultimate bundle, seemingly confirming that the roster would only have two more characters revealed. This was deduced by the pattern that the characters were in, which seemed to alternate between two sides of the packaging. This led to an intense debate on what became known as box theory. Just a few days later, a more optimistic theory emerged. Duckmeat and Sabi proposed blog theory, which calculated the rate that characters were announced to predict just how many characters were left. By their estimates, there were six characters left. However, a major issue with this theory is that it assumed the rate of character announcements would stay consistent, which they never did in any of the Smash speculation periods before. Despite its obvious flaws, the box versus blog theory became a huge focal point in the community. On September 14, 2018, a Reddit user named Noah Testy leaked several details about Smash Ultimate. In their posts, they claimed to be a playtester for Ultimate. They stated that Ken and Incineroar would be the base roster's final two characters, and Spirits were similar to Brawl's stickers. They also claimed that Piranha Plant was going to be the game's first DLC character, and the plant wouldn't utilize a fireball in their moveset. They also claimed the internal name of Ultimate was Cross 2. After they made three posts on Reddit, Noah Testy stopped posting and hasn't used the account since. All of their posts would be confirmed legitimate after the game's final presentation. On September 22, 2018, an image of Ken giving a thumbs up was uploaded to the internet. It showed Ivysaur, Pichu, and Pac-Man all using their up taunts on the Moray Tower stage in what appears to be a debug mode. Fans realized the odd clipping of Ken and Pac-Man's right feet were issues in the actual game, giving the screenshot legitimacy. 
While Nintendo never commented on the image, its validity was confirmed in the Final Smash presentation. Two days later, a 4chan post claimed Incineroar, Ken, and Piranha Plant were an ultimate, and Piranha Plant would be in a vehicle similar to Bowser Jr. While Piranha Plant uses a pipe or a pot, it's unclear if this was legitimate, or piggybacking off other leaks. Despite Sakurai saying there wouldn't be a lot of characters left to reveal in the August 2018 Direct, fans were still expecting more. All of this came to its epic conclusion right before the presentation that would reveal the final two characters, Incineroar and Ken. The Grinch leak was a hoax that went viral, originally posted at the end of October 2018, showcasing Banjo and Kazooie, Chorus Kids, Gino, Isaac, Ken, and Shadow as part of artwork that resembled the Smash Brothers Everyone Is Here mural. The image was uploaded to Snapchat and then 4chan where it quickly spread across the internet. The reason it's called the Grinch leak is because it featured artwork for merchandise relating to the Grinch movie, which is one of the reasons why so many people believed it. Internet detectives hypothesized that the image came from a French company Marina PLV, which had worked with Bandai Namco in the past. All of these characters were believable to a certain degree. None of them at that point were shown as assist trophies, and some were characters Sakurai had considered at one point or another. Papa Gino's, a YouTuber who covers smash leaks and rumors, was certain of Banjo's inclusion due to a source he had, so he backed the leak. Liam Robertson contacted the artist who was supposedly responsible for the image, which led to the artist denying any involvement. This led to a civil war in the Smash community, as some people claimed the images were legitimate, while others claimed they were false. However, the internet's collective dreams would be destroyed just two weeks later when the rest of the game's roster was officially announced, disproving the Grinch hoax once and for all. Forgaben came out against the Grinch hoax, stating that he'd heard Isaac was an assist trophy, not a playable character. He also stated that a new Square Enix character was coming, but said it it was possible it was moved to DLC. Forgaben would also claim that Minecraft would see representation in the base game. After the game was released, he suggested that we could see Minecraft content for DLC, but ever since he made that post, no Minecraft content has appeared in Smash Ultimate. The Grinch hoax was probably based on an earlier rumor, nicknamed the Chad Ganondorf. This was a post that originated on 4chan back in September 2018, and featured mostly the same info in the Grinch hoax. It's currently unknown who is responsible for the doctored images. In the final Smash presentation, Nintendo revealed that Ultimate would be getting DLC, and that Piranha Plant would be the game's first post-launch character. However, two weeks before Ultimate was set to be released, a leaked copy appeared online. This was because the game was sold early somewhere in Mexico. Some players downloaded a copy of the game and beat it, revealing all of the game's contents early. Nintendo tried taking down videos showcasing the game's story and music through DMCA takedowns. However, information quickly spread across the internet, including the game's cutscenes. There's been many rumors about the DLC for Smash Ultimate. Hitagi, a contact of Forgaben, claimed the game would see a Grand Blue character, most likely Catalina. Hitagi also claimed that Steve would be coming to Ultimate, which Forgaben initially supported. The rumor was proven entirely false, as Grand Blue didn't receive any characters in Fighter Pass 1. In November 2018, Forgaben would double down about Minecraft representation in Smash, stating there'd be a boss battle. However, no evidence to support this claim has ever been found. After Banjo's reveal, Forgaben stated Minecraft would see representation with the first DLC pass, which was also false. On October 11th, 2018, Japanese Twitter user Milk Bosatu posted that a VR mode would come to Ultimate. They also claimed that Dragon Quest Hero and a fighting game character would come to Smash. In particular, they stated that the hero wouldn't have any female alts and that a fighting game character would be coming as DLC. In December, they claimed the fighting game character would be female and that she'd utilize flying weapons. This wouldn't come true, as Terry was revealed as the game's fifth post-launch character. Milk Bosatu wasn't the only one who leaked a VR mode to Smash Ultimate. Papa Gino started reporting on information that was obtained by a source named VR Plant. They claimed to be the same person that posted details about Ridley and Daisy's inclusion on 4chan before the E3 2018 presentation. The source would leak various upcoming releases to Papa Gino's, including Hero's release date. An anonymous poster on 4chan stated that Dragon Quest, Banjo-Kazooie, Doom Guy, and Monster Hunter would be part of the season pass. This was notable as it was the only instance of someone correctly guessing all the alts for the Dragon Quest hero. While the first two would come true, the other characters wouldn't be part of the pass. Sticky.smt on Twitter would later claim that they made the post and that they guessed the alts for hero. 
There was also a theory that the DLC characters were inadvertently leaked by Google AdWords. This was first proposed by Duckmeat and other users on Papagino's Discord server. Users found that by typing Banjo-Kazooie, Ryu Hayabusa, Doomslayer, and Artorias on Google, it would show an ad for the Smash Brothers website. However, it was revealed that anyone could buy an ad on Google, and the theory was proven false with Hero's reveal. On December 10th, 2018, an anonymous poster on 5channel, a Japanese equivalent to 4chan, posted that Joker would come to Smash. They stated that Mementos would be the stage, and that Jack Frost would appear in their moveset. They stated that Persona 5 R would be a deluxe version of Persona 5, and that Persona 5 U was a fighting game. While the poster correctly predicted the stage and character, the other info was mostly false. Another poster on 5channel claimed that Erdrick from Dragon Quest, Ryu Hayabusa from Ninja Gaiden, Steve from Minecraft, and the Doom Guy were the characters for the Smash Ultimate Fighter Pass 1. Before Terry's release, there was a 4chan post claiming Geese, Heihachi, Lloyd Irving, and Hollow Knight would come as Wii costumes with an online mode called Slip Space. They also claimed that Doom Slayer was in the pass, and Geno and Frogger would be extra DLC characters. This turned out to be inaccurate. There's been several accurate leaks about the first fighter pass for Ultimate. Right before the game's release, Persona 5's Joker was announced at the Game Awards to the surprise of many. When the game was released, data miners were unable to uncover a couple of code names for upcoming characters. They discovered Pakun, Jack, and Brave. Similarly, Mementos was accidentally leaked as Joker's stage through an oversight that led to unrelated strings being left over in the game's compiler. There were also unused strings that suggested Joker would get an alt costume featuring a ponytail. However, Joker didn't get ponytails, and the data is nowhere to be found when he was released. Since then, the oversight has been fixed. Modes that were added through DLC were also data mined early. Files named How to Play Stage Builder and How to Play Home Run were found back in March 2019. Nintendo accidentally showed off Stage Builder in an ad published on April 16th, with the mode being officially revealed the next day. On March 31st, 2019, Best Buy accidentally published Joker's render for Smash ahead of its official announcement. This led to speculation that Joker would be released soon after. The render was removed from the ad the next day, and Joker was officially shown on April 17th. Reset-era admin Shinobi hinted at Banjo's inclusion in Smash a full week before their reveal. On June 5th, 2019, he posted, Been a while since we saw Banjo in anything. Hope we're in for a smashing good time. Tansut, who previously leaked Cloud's presence in Smash for 3DS and Wii U, also hinted that Dragon Quest would be getting a character. They reportedly heard that info back in December 2018. There was also a rumor by one of Papagino's Discord mods, Paragon, dubbed the Paraleak. They claimed the first fighter pass would include Joker, Luminary, Banjo, Frisk, and Waluigi. Where exactly they got this info is unknown, but the rumor gained significant traction after Hiro and Banjo-Kazooie were revealed at E3. However, this rumor would be proven false with Terry's reveal and San's inclusion as a Mii Fighter costume. Nintendo of Europe updated the page for the fourth fighter in the past to include an SNK copyright on September 1st, 2019, before Terry was announced. They took down the copyright, but Terry was confirmed as a fighter just three days later. On the same day a 7-Eleven ad went up, showcasing Banjo Banjo and Kazooie. It was thought that Banjo would be released before the ad was changed, and Banjo was. Before Byleth was revealed as the final character for Fighter Pass 1, there were many rumors about who would end the pass. Starting from November 2019 and lasting until January, Forgaben and Sabi would post almost weekly update on who the character wasn't. This drew in a lot of criticism, as they never stated who the character was. Forgaben would also walk back some of his previous claims, stating that his source was mistaken. Before the presentation, Forgaben would post the Mii Fighter costumes, at least indicating he knew some information in advance. However, it's unclear if he or his sources knew the character as early as November 2019. As for Byleth's reveal, Sakurai announced that six more characters would be coming as DLC for Ultimate, meaning the speculation and rumors cycle will continue until December 2021. Although many rumors have been confirmed or disproven, one image has constantly stumped Smash fans. A video appeared online showing the Kaku Demon from Doom and Mallow from Super Mario RPG as Mii costume head. Initially, it was thought that it'd be impossible to mod new Mii costumes in the game, giving the potential video leak some credibility. However, it was found that Mii costumes could be modded, thus raising some suspicion if it was credible. What's more is that Ken's Shoryuken does 0.7% difference in damage, suggesting the balance was altered. As of this video, it's unknown if this was an elaborate hoax or if they were actual leaks. After Min Min's reveal, there was a fake 4chan post that spread across the Smash community. However, when attempting to search for the post, it was revealed that the image was fake.
Did you know? Two decades after its release, one of Super Smash Bros. Melee's weirdest mistakes still isn't fully understood. The oversight in question can be encountered on the Dreamland stage, but only if one player is either Marth or Roy. On the stage, players must wait for Wispy Woods to blink twice in the background. If any player fighting as Roy or Marth performs a jab, forward tilt, up tilt, down tilt, dash attack, or standing grab before Wispy's eyes are closed completely on the first blink, something strange can happen. Regardless of how far into their animation cycle the player is, two frames before Wispy's eyes close completely, Marth or Roy's attack will continue in a very slow and awkward looking way until the animation ends. The attack lasts as long as usual, but the hitboxes will be glitched. One example is that the hitbox for the standing grab appears to extend the full distance, despite the player not lunging forward at all. The inner workings of this oversight eluded players for some time, until a Reddit user named Evson gave a possible explanation as to why this happens. Evson stated that Marth and Roy's blinking animation was somehow linked to Wispy's, with the idea being that if Marth or Roy's blinking animation synced up with Wispy's, and one character performed the aforementioned jab, tilts, or grab, the glitch would be triggered. However, due to some investigation conducted by YouTuber Awesome Sauce, this theory was debunked, and the mechanisms behind the glitch remain unknown. This isn't the only strange oversight in Melee relating to grabs. Another mistake is that Yoshi's dash grab will routinely miss its target. This is because the hitbox is misaligned on the Z-axis, appearing behind the playing field. Unlocking the camera gives a better view of what's happening. Characters with thinner hitboxes such as Marth and Zelda can avoid the grab simply by standing still, as Yoshi reaches behind them. Super Smash Bros. Melee was the second Super Smash Bros. title produced, and had the shortest development time of any Smash game to date. Possibly due to only having a year of development time, several mistakes like these slipped under the radar and made their way into the final game. Another small oversight has been exploited by some savvy players. In the game's all-star mode, Mr. Game & Watch can heal himself in between the stages in the rest area. By spamming the Judge move, players can spawn a fruit if they're lucky enough to roll a 7, which they can use to heal themselves. As you might expect, this makes battling on higher difficulties much easier. In Super Smash Bros. Brawl and subsequent releases, the oversight was fixed. On the flip side, players could actually damage themselves by using moves such as Roy's Flare Blade within the rest area. This issue would be present in the series much longer than the ability to heal, and wouldn't be a rest until Smash for 3DS and Wii U, where all damage done in the rest area is negated. One more oversight relating to Mr. Game & Watch is that the character's neutral, back, and up aerials are flagged as special moves, not as aerial attacks. Due to this oversight, these moves cannot be L-cancelled, even though it should be possible to do so, just like with every other character's aerial attacks. This error was also fixed in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Bowser's down throw in the Japanese and North American versions of Melee does zero damage to Jigglypuff and Mr. Game & Watch. This is because the down throw does damage dependent on the enemy's weight. And since Jigglypuff and Mr. Game & Watch are so light, they don't actually take any damage. This mistake was corrected in the PAL version of Melee, so that Bowser's down throw does damage to any character, regardless of weight. Another mistake has actually been seen by just about every single person ever to play Melee. It can be found in multiple short videos in the final game, which were recorded during development of the Temple stage. Two platforms that don't exist in the game's final build are present in the video. They even make an appearance in the game's promotional materials. By loading up the special video within Melee, players can see these mysterious beta platforms. They also show up in the short clip that plays after Luigi completes the single-player mode for a split second. But that's not the only place these platforms appear. They're even in the game's manual. Melee also features 290 trophies, and since every trophy is fairly detailed and comes with a paragraph of text, some errors were made. Several mistakes came about from the localization process, such as the Hurlerin trophy being spelled wrong in English. Another error made during localization can be seen with the Great Fox trophy, where its description erroneously states that the Great Fox debuted in Star Fox when it actually first appeared in Star Fox 64. The correct game was listed in the Japanese version. This slip-up was also fixed in the PAL version where it was changed to read Lilat Wars, the European name for Star Fox 64, making the North American game the only version with this mistake. The trophy for 
for Meta Knight also has a factual error. The trophy says his first appearance was Kirby Superstar, but the Masked Swordsman actually first appeared in Kirby's Adventure. In addition, the name has a hyphen in between Meta and Knight, which is used to distinguish the Meta Knight army and the Meta Knight character. And if you're wondering, the Japanese game lists the correct titles and has the correct name. Naming isn't the only issue, though. His body is silver in the trophy, whereas in Kirby's Adventure and Kirby Superstar, Meta Knight's body is blue. In Melee's Japanese release, the Banzai Bill is incorrectly labeled as the Bullet Bill. Bullet Bills and Banzai Bills are different enemy types. Banzai Bills first appeared in Super Mario World and are bigger, more deadlier versions of the Bullet Bill. In the US and PAL release, the trophy name was updated, but the game origin wasn't fixed, so the trophy has errors in all versions. The Sheriff Trophy has a mistake of its own. It states that Sheriff, the 1979 Nintendo arcade game, was released only in Japan, but this isn't the case. The arcade title was rebranded as Bandito in the West, and was licensed to a company called Exidy. He's one of the oldest characters in the Smash Brothers series, and would later appear as an assist trophy in Smash for 3DS and Wii U onwards. It seems that even Nintendo had a difficult time remembering when some of their games were released. The Samus trophy in Melee erroneously states that Metroid was released in 1989, when it was released in 1986 in Japan, and the US version was released in 1987. In fact, no Metroid titles were released released in 1989 at all. This error doesn't exist in the Japanese version, as there are no dates listed in that version's trophy descriptions. There's also a minor mistake in the Four Giants trophy. The first part of the description quotes Tail, one of the fairies in Majora's Mask, but uses a different translation than what was in the English game. The trophy says, Swamp, Mountain, Ocean, Valley, while in the game it says, Swamp, Mountain, Ocean, Canyon. It's possible that when translating the text for Melee, they didn't check what was used in Majora's Mask and instead relied on the Japanese, thus leading to a different interpretation. Luigi's trophy erroneously states that he debuted in the arcade game Mario Brothers, but in reality, Luigi debuted in Mario Brothers for the Game & Watch, which released about three months before the arcade game. Outside of the shared name, both games have no relation to each other. Another mistake can be found in the description for the Master Sword, which says it first appeared in The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. The sword actually first appeared in The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. The day Daisy Trophy's description incorrectly claims she appeared in Mario Golf for the Nintendo 64 and Game Boy Color. This error is due to a mistranslation from the Japanese game which says Daisy appeared in Mario Open Golf. This title was released as NES Open Tournament Golf in the West, and features Daisy as Luigi's caddy. Early versions of Melee also feature an unusual error on Daisy's trophy. If the player zooms in on her hair and looks at the back of her scalp, a third eye can be seen. The trophies even spread misinformation about how Melee's mechanics work. Dr. Mario's in-game trophy states, There's hardly any difference in the abilities of Mario and Dr. Mario, so choosing is largely a matter of taste. Dr. Mario is a tad slower due to his lack of exercise. However, Mario and Dr. Mario have the same in-game speed. Ganondorf, another clone, also had a curious error in the first versions of Melee. In 1.0, if the player had a bunny hood equipped, Ganondorf could perform a second jab. While this was probably a leftover from when Ganondorf was created using Captain Falcon's base, the second jab has no hitbox, so it couldn't actually damage the opponents. The jab was fixed in later versions of Melee. Ganondorf has another oversight that exists in Melee's sound test. Going to the 30th entry for Ganondorf will play the sound effect for Falcon Punch. This was probably also a leftover from when the team used the captain as Ganon's base. As players collect more trophies, they'll be able to see more of the trophy room. If the language is set to Japanese, a virtual boy can be seen next to the plant. Despite being released in the United States, the virtual boy cannot be seen in the English version of the game. Since the Japanese language option doesn't exist in the European version of Melee, this means that European players can never hail the wonderful virtual boy in Melee. The home run contest had several errors that were addressed in subsequent updates of Melee. In pre-PAL versions of Melee, it was possible to hit the sandbag even after it lands, allowing players to score a few extra feet if they could get to the sandbag before the score is tallied up. In the NTSC versions, the counter for how far the sandbag goes will stop updating after 9,999.9 feet. Bizarrely, despite not displaying the full distance, the game will still record the actual distance past this number and update the character's record appropriately. Another thing that isn't visible in-game can be found on the texture for Roy's sword. It actually has copyright information on it. What's interesting is that HAL Laboratory is spelled incorrectly as HAL Laboratory.inc.
Roy has a number of other oddities associated with him. He can't appear in the game's single-player classic mode as a CPU character. Despite this, there's still an intro image for him within the game's files. In the intro image, official art, victory poses, and his portrait in the game's CSS, Roy has a sheath. However, the sheath does not appear during gameplay. Another mistake in Melee can make characters appear entirely black. This dark color scheme is normally only assigned to a single CPU enemy in the event match Link's Adventure to illustrate dark Link, but this shade can be seen in multiplayer using a glitch. To see it, the game mode must be set to team battle with four of the same character, all on the same team. The player must then enter the name entry menu and go back a menu at the same time using two controllers. This will cause the game to progress to the stage select screen, letting players start a round under illegitimate conditions. These illegitimate conditions can be several things, such as a player entering a match alone, which will instantly end a stock match as the game sees no opponent has any stocks. But in our case, the game will render character 4 with a fully black overlay. This is because when two or more of the same character are on the same team, those same characters have to be various shades of the same color. Player 1 is unchanged, player 2 is lighter, and player 3 is darker. It was never planned by the developers to have four people on one team, but the game loads the next shade in the list regardless. The part of the glitch where players open the name entry menu and go back a menu at the same time is known as the name entry glitch, and it's a very versatile glitch. It can even be used to play as master hand. If the player picks any player for slot 1, then opens the name entry menu without choosing a character on slot 3, then performs the name entry glitch, player 3 will spawn as master hand, and if the player has their controller in slot 3, they can control master hand themselves. Would you also like to know the entire history of Nintendo's consoles, all the way from the NES, SNES, N64, and GameCube to the Switch? For a whole hour of Nintendo console trivia, click or tap the video on screen. Now, as much as I love the SNES, I also love modern video games, so I'm going to go and spend several hours dying repeatedly on the first boss of Elden Ring.